I'm in control, 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 control. International Chess Monday is the most famous training day out there and it's for one reason, the bench press. Every guy wants a bigger bench press, every guy wants a stronger bench press, but the best way to get there is not just to bench press, is it? No, I mean, one of the biggest things that I wanted to do when I was younger was get a Schwarzenegger-sized chest. And when it comes to the functionality of it, the fact is the bench press is gonna be one of your heaviest lifts that you can do from an upper body perspective. So it makes sense, if you're trying to attack that as a specific goal, you should know exactly what muscles are involved and how to build yourself towards getting there. Exactly, when you think of the bench press in particular, obviously that Schwarzenegger size chest, triceps and shoulders are also involved. And we have a ton of core engagement too that I think people forget. Our abs and glutes have to be really live when we're bench pressing. Yeah, we tend to neglect how much bracing, foot contact, five points of contact throughout the bench, feet and hands. They play such a critical role and we can learn a lot of this stuff through some of these extra exercises that'll put us in a better position for that barbell bench. Press. Exactly, this is also the lift that's going to teach you to push anything away, whether it's another human on the football field, <laughs> whether you're trying to get up off the ground, that function of the bench press is also critical. But like you said, we wanna attack it not just by bench pressing, but by working through some exercises that hit our other functions. So let's get right to our big five list for your bench press. So number five on our list, we're going to go to the half kneeling overhead press, ideally with a kettlebell, although you can really use any implement that you want for this. And what we're trying to get out of this is a really, really good overhead press. And we're trying to really build up our shoulders, focus on that pressing motion while attacking our shoulders and while thinking about our shoulders, which is not something I feel like people do when they bench press. No, specifically when you're looking at a bench press, most people will stop on their journey for training because of shoulder pain. And a lot of that shoulder pain can come from instability or lack of strength in that very primary joint from your pressing and pulling. And we use the shoulders a lot, especially with any upper body workout, it's the main junction we have to operate through. So especially for that, we wanna make sure that we can build as much strength as possible with our training in the shoulder to help support us through a bench press. But then when it comes to programming, we have to take that extra step of knowing where to place it in that first program and how much to add. Exactly, and that's why to me, I think the half kneeling overhead press is king because especially with that kettlebell, we get to use a large load, but the kettlebell is gonna place you in a safer shoulder position than you'll get out of a barbell press or a dumbbell press. Now those are acceptable if that's what you have access to. You wanna get some kind of overhead press in there. The half kneeling position really gives you better access to stabilize the pelvis in a way that allows you to press overhead from single side or both at the same time. Big thing when you're doing your overhead press, regardless of the variation, we wanna think about keeping our rib cage down. So thinking of keeping our abs tight. Don't let your back arch too much because then all you're doing is you're actually taking a little bit of emphasis off of your shoulders. Suddenly you're putting it back on that chest. We wanna make sure that we're making this a shoulder press and we're making this as vertical of a press as we can. This is not an incline press. You're gonna do that in your normal chest training. I try and stay within strength reps of about eight to 10 if possible for somebody, because then you can focus on your form. You can focus on how you're bringing through it, whether it's a kettlebell or dumbbell, you get a lot of benefits from when you're doing it within those strength types of repetition. So that's number five, the half kneeling single arm overhead press. And if we're talking about number four, we're gonna choose ourselves with another shoulder stabilizing exercise and a basic when it comes to principles of strength training, the push up, but we're gonna give you a resistance band option for that push up. If you're bench pressing, if you're bench pressing heavy, at some point you're gonna outgrow push ups. You're gonna find yourself doing sets of 15, 20, 25, numbers much higher than that. We wanna add a little bit of resistance to that with the resistance band, which is gonna one, teach a little bit of acceleration. We always wanna learn how to be explosive. That's that's gonna help your max, that's gonna help you drive up those bench press numbers. And two, when you've got that resistance band around you, you're gonna have to be thoughtful with your core. And anytime we can emphasize that core, I think that's so important because people forget you wanna translate energy up through the ground when you're doing a bench press, and that involves squeezing your glutes, squeezing your abs, and having that and not being loose through that. So when we have the resistance band driven around our waist, that's gonna help us really emphasize that a ton. One of the best ways that I've generally programmed this with my clients is adding it in as a drop set after your bench press sets. So you can make it so it's gonna then fatigue the muscle out a little bit more. And what we're really focusing on is again, a little bit lower reps, eight to 10, because the function is maintaining that lockout, that form and that stress. It's not to burn you out by nature. It's really to get the most of, how can I get this motion when I'm fatigued and when I'm tired? And if you can do that with a resistance banded push-up, especially in your programming, it's a nice add-on to get a little bit more out of the chest 
with your existing program that you already have. This is actually a motion that I like to go to on days when I'm not bench pressing heavy, when I'm not going sure. aggressive. I'll throw this in on an accessory day, maybe as one of my last lifts, and then you can kind of push the reps a little bit more. I feel like in general, if you're being accelerative with that band and trying to be explosive, you're only gonna have 10 to 12 reps max anyway. Once totally. you get past that, you're not gonna be hitting anything. So those are your two ways to program it. That's number four on our list. So we have looked at our shoulders a little bit. We have looked at the overall motion of how we're pushing things. One thing we want to think about, and we want to think about this in terms of lockout, is attacking our triceps. One of the best motions to do that is going to be something called the JM press. I think of this as kind of a hybrid press between the close grip bench press and the skull crusher. And when you can get that hybridness to it, it gives you a chance to explore pressing away, which is again what we're doing functionally when we're doing the bench press. The triceps are highly underrated when it comes to bench pressing and especially bench pressing heavy. It tends to be the thing we forget about. We always think I need a bigger chest for that when really it could be your triceps that are holding you back from a big bench. The great thing with the JM press too, and I think this is why it's such an indispensable in your quest for a bigger bench press, is the fact that we can load this up a little bit. So this is a great press. I'll use this on arm days, partly because I'm trying to get bigger arms when I'm there too, but I'll also throw this in. I think this is a great end game exercise on chest day. Yeah, and I think that you have a lot of options from a modality perspective. I think, you know, your best option if we're talking true strength is going with a straight bar, barbell, easy curl bar, something like that. Most applicable for a lot of people when it comes to stabilizing side by side is going with a dumbbell. Now this is a little bit of a tricky move. So let's take them a little bit through how you would set up for the JM press and how we're gonna execute this JM press. I mean, it is, it is essentially basically a bench press setup and that we wanna be on a bench glutes squeezed, abs nice and tight, but let's go through the JM press motion a little bit just so they understand. Yeah, so specifically with the JM press, the key function you wanna do is make sure that you're starting out in a little bit of a stretch position for that tricep. So instead of having you stacked directly above the chest, where really you're stacking the elbow and shoulder and wrist, what you wanna do is have the dumbbells or weight back just a little bit more, maybe at about eyebrow height, yep. forehead space. So you're getting some level of tension through that shoulder and you have to stabilize to a certain level. From there, what you're gonna end up doing is allowing the elbows to descend down towards the sides of your rib cage while your hands are descending down and the weight is gonna come down anywhere between the chin to collarbone, somewhere between that neck area. Whether it's a barbell, dumbbells, whatever, you're gonna find yourself somewhere in this range and based on the length of your forearms, length of your arms, it could differentiate little by little because everyone's just a little bit different by then. From there, you're gonna end up extending and pressing both of those areas back up to that starting position just above eyebrows and forehead and it's gonna get a good feel for the front side of the shoulder and those triceps would lock out. Yeah, I like to think of it as I'm trying to get the points of my elbows down to my ribs. I'm trying to almost touch the heads of the dumbbells to my shoulders. And then from there, I think the key thing is, like you said, Dave, we don't wanna just press straight back up, but we wanna press up and back a little bit. That way we still keep tension on our triceps through the entire motion. It winds up being a really, really great triceps builder. And again, it's gonna set your triceps up for success on the bench press. If you haven't done this before, you might then also stay with around that six to eight rep range because you wanna get comfortable with it first. As you do that, you can increase the repetitions, you can increase some of the intensity with it, but I do think it's most important that you get the form and technique down with how you feel with this motion because it may be new to some lifters. Exactly, highly personal move number three on our list. So what we would consider as our number two move would be a chest supported incline row. The reason for a chest supported incline row is we're not gonna put ourselves in a position where we have to stabilize through an isometric motion, like with a bent over row, which isn't a bad option for you on building the back, but we would just prefer putting you in a chest supported option where you can just focus on the posterior chain. Your lats play a key role when it comes to bench pressing because you wanna make sure you can stabilize yourself with the bench, grab the bar, put your shoulder blades in the right position so you can actually explode that weight off the chest. But if you don't have that proper posterior chain strength, it may be lagging into your front side. So we always wanna see you add on that backside strength, backside shoulder, lats, et cetera. It's gonna help you support your bench press more than you would imagine. The incline row works so well in three different ways. The first thing you really get to do, when we set up on the bench press, we wanna have a little bit of an arch through our thoracic and you get to work on that and hone that a little bit because as we finish our incline row, 
your chest may start to come up off the bench. That's not a bad thing. So that's something that we get to do on the incline row. The other thing we really get to do that's tremendous is we're starting to find exactly where and how our elbows need to move in relation to our torso. So a lot of people sit on the bench press. If you've never done a barbell bench press before, you're gonna wind up too wide. You're gonna get your elbows out to the sides because you think that's your natural way of moving. But when we're on a row, when we're on any row, but especially the incline row, what you're gonna find is that you're actually gonna wind up bringing the bar a lot lower, maybe to the bottom of your chest, maybe to the almost to your rib cage. And that is how you naturally move. So you get to explore this and discover this as you're rowing, because essentially all any row variation is, is a bench press upside down. And then on top of that, what's nice about the incline option is it really targets the middle traps and the upper traps. Yeah. And when you're talking about that, we're talking about the muscles that are gonna support and navigate where those shoulder blades move in space. So if we can build that upper back up while getting some lat integrity, while teaching the shoulders where to move in the most natural form for yourself, it's a great recipe for setting up a big bench press. Really, really underrated and probably one of the secrets to a big chest in addition to helping your bench press. So that's number two on our list, the incline row. And for our number one move, the one exercise that you absolutely have to do if you're working towards a big bench press, it is something called the floor press. And you can use either dumbbells or barbells for this. Essentially, you're going to literally lie on the floor. And from that position, we're going to wind up doing our dumbbell, our barbell, our kettlebell presses. That means that we're not really going through a full range of motion and that has some really underrated benefits to it. Exactly, I mean, it's the best way that I've compared that for clients is when you're using that stretching motion, that elastic energy, you're loading up the catapult yeah. and then we're letting go of the catapult and it's throwing that object out there. With a floor press, you're loading it up, but you can't explode it back out because you're not able to use that same energy. So it brings a different scenario where you have to really own the weight, which translates well to a bench press like we talked about. Once you've mastered the floor press, you should be able to use something very similar to your bench press load, maybe even a little bit heavier because we're working through a smaller range of motion. We're also working through a really shoulder safe range of motion. So most of your shoulder issues are gonna come at the very bottom of the bench press. But when we're cut off, now our elbow cannot go below our shoulder when we're bench pressing. And that's gonna put you in a much safer position so you're able to load this up and you're able to do this relatively safely although it can be a little bit tricky and that's why the pin press is another great option. And a pin press can set within different heights that you can change yourself at or you can press with blocks you can choose something that'll limit the range of motion but this way you may be up on a bench you have a, a little bit of a safer scenario for yourself whether it's just mental or in the physical space but we always say the floor press the pin press if you're choosing a limited range of motion spot where you can control that deceleration and then explode up through the concentric motion you're really going to add a lot, of, a lot of strength and integrity to your bench press, whether you believe it or not. So for a barbell floor press, what I would suggest is using either spotter arms off of a squat stand or spotter arms off of the rack. You could use them with the J cups facing on the outside, but you want to put it in a position where you don't have to move too much to unrack the weight because that can be one of the most daunting parts is unracking the weight in the beginning and getting over yourself so you before you even start, you're in a good spot. I always say scooting back as close to the rack as possible, getting the bar where it's just above eyebrow height. So when you do that unracking, it's not a far distance you have to travel. I've always found that's a key thing is setting someone up the right way can allow them to execute it the right way. Exactly, the one hack I have for the dumbbell floor press, and you can put your dumbbells on a bench sit up nice and close to the bench and I can grab those dumbbells and then lay back into my floor press. So that's gonna be a little bit of an easier way for me to set up for the floor press because this is a tricky one to set up for. In terms of reps and sets, I like thinking three to four sets of six to eight and I'll use this in my workouts. If I'm doing something a little bit more advanced, I may use this after a bench press to really push myself over the edge. So I've attacked kind of a full range of motion. Now I'm going to a more partial range of motion or I'll use it in place of a bench press. Think of doing four sets of six to eight. It's a way to change things up, work through that smaller range of motion, acclimate myself to finishing with a heavy load. Yeah, and I think especially what you need to know is whether the difficulty with your bench press is near the chest or it's up near the lockout. And if it's near the lockout, then you might wanna go a little bit lighter, focus on a little bit higher rep in some instances, and then go to that six to eight reps and others. So you may be going back and forth between different exercise days and going either higher up on one day or lower up on another one. And then if we're talking about being an issue at the chest, you can really load up the floor press really well. And you can focus on getting those triceps really strong because the fact of the matter is with that bench press, it's not just your chest helping you bench press. So 
the stronger your triceps are, the stronger your bench press is. The stronger your shoulders are, the stronger your bench press is. Which is why adding something like a floor press and all of the exercises that we've given you put you in a really, really strong position to maximize what you're doing, especially with the bench.